Hello. Welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. Today we'll discuss how to set up the Torkel 900 and the BVMs for a discharge test. Let's get started. The Torkel comes with a pair of current cables which are connected to the battery bank. One of the cables has red sleeves on either end and that's the positive cable. The other one doesn't have the red sleeves. Um, it has, uh, if it has a clamp, the clamp is black uh, in color, and that's the negative cable. The cables are to be connected to the battery bank in a certain manner. The first step is to connect the uh, the positive cable on the negative term, the the negative cable on the negative terminal on the torque. After that, you would take the other end of the negative cable and connect it on the negative post of the battery bank. Then you would connect the positive cable to the positive post of the battery bank. And then the final point of connection would be made at the positive terminal on the torque. Now it's important for the purpose of safety that you make the connections in this order and the disconnections are to be made in the exact reverse order. So you will start off from uh, step four, that is by disconnecting the positive cable on the positive terminal on the torque, and then you would go through steps three, two, and one. And the reason why we do this is because uh, when you test on certain battery types like uh, vented lead acid batteries, uh, there may be presence of gas like hydrogen and oxygen uh, close to the battery bank. And if you are making connections or disconnections at the battery bank, you don't want any sparks to occur uh, at, at the battery bank for that reason. Uh, so that's the reason why we make the last connection or and the last disconnection at the torque instead of the battery bank uh, to, to avert any, uh, any incidents. Right. Voltage sense leads are provided as optional accessories along with the torque. You would use voltage sense leads if you are testing with really long current leads uh, and or you're testing at really high currents. What happens in is in these cases, uh, there's considerable voltage drop along the current cables. And by default, the torque measures the voltage at the current posts. Right? So that includes the battery voltage and the uh, voltage drop along the cables. Uh, Typically, when you're testing at low current, if you're testing with the standard cables, the voltage drop is negligible. But uh, in situations where there is considerable voltage drop, uh, we, we uh, measure the voltage, but the battery voltage at the terminals by using the voltage sense leads. And that's how we discount the, the current cables. We discount the voltage drop that occurs along the current cables. So that was uh, about the torque connection to the battery bank. Let's talk about BVMs or battery voltage monitors. Now, these are used to monitor individual cell voltages. When you order a BVM kit, the BVM kit will consist of uh, these components that you see on the slide here. Uh, it'll have the AC adapter, it'll have a power and signal connector, and it will have a bunch of ethernet cables and BVMs. BVMs are modules uh, that you can see. You can see picture of one on the right. Uh, each module has a couple of Ethernet ports. One port is marked in, the other one is marked out. Uh, it has a banana connection on it, on which fits a dolphin clip. Uh, the dolphin clips are provided uh, by us by default. Um, we also have some other options uh, if you want to go with those, or you can get your own, uh, which you can connect to the BVM by using a banana cable. You can also see a USB cable in the picture on the left. Uh, this USB cable comes out from the power and signal connector uh, and it goes into the torque. The diagram here shows you how the BVM connections are done. You can start off by powering on the power and signal connector. Then you can connect the first BVM unit to the power and signal connector using one of the ethernet cables. The first BVM unit is then connected on the negative post of the battery string. 
all the other BVM units would then be connected one by one on the negative post of each of the cells or jars that are present on the string. The last BVM unit goes on the positive of the battery string. The order in which you connect the BVMs would be the same, that is negative, starting from the negative going towards the positive, irrespective of how these cells are numbered on the string. When you test on a string with n cells or jars, you would need n plus 1 BVMs. Keep that in mind when you order a BVM kit. Make sure you know what's the maximum number of cells or jars present on a string in your system and order a BVM kit accordingly. The next step is to connect the Ethernet cables from one BVM to the other in a daisy chain manner. You can see here that the Ethernet cable, each Ethernet cable runs from the out port of one BVM to the in port of the next BVM. If you're testing on a string which has more than 60 cells, uh, that is, you have to use more than 61 BVMs, uh, in that case, you would connect a feedback loop from the out port of the last BVM unit back to the power and signal connector. For this connection, you can use the long red Ethernet cable that's there in your kit. Finally, you would connect the USB cable from the power and signal connector uh, into one of the USB ports on the Torkoal 900 uh, provided for, for a BVM connection. You can connect to either BVM1 or BVM2. This concludes the video on how to set up the Torkoal 900 and the BVMs for a discharge test. Visit the Mega YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews, and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.